Uh, hey, look, we have Mel Gibson on the phone. Hey, Mel. Oh, hi, Jimmy. How are you? <laughs> really good to talk to you. I heard you got a new project you're working on. Oh, really? I didn't hear anything about that. Oh, come on, Mel. Don't be coy. <laughs> okay, all right. You got me. We are in the early stages of development for my next project, like you said. Which is? A sequel to The Passion of the Christ. Passion of the Christ 2. And it's totally real? Totally real. Not a joke. <laughs> I know it sounds like a joke or a sketch or something, but I guarantee you this is 100% real and <laughs> really happening. That's amazing, Mel. What compelled you to make a sequel to this almost 15-year-old movie? Well, as a devout Catholic, I felt that I could do more to tell the story of the life of Jesus Christ. <laughs> or, I should say, as a devout Catholic with an anger management problem, the story of the life of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a little bit of an anger thing yourself, don't you, Jimmy? No, I do not. Come on. I can hear the storms in you from here over the phone. Okay, maybe. I knew it. I can always tell a fellow traveler. <laughs> Not really, just medical marijuana and sugar. Candy bars cool me down sometimes. Ah, candy bars, good choice. What's your poison, Twix? I like a good whatchamacallit or a hundred grand. Ah, deep cuts, very off the grid. I buy them by the 12-pack, so I know I always have them around. I'm going to mail you a giant shipment of candy bars, Jimmy, as a prank. You don't have to do that. <laughs> well, you're the one who told me about it, so if you get shaped by a pack of Snickers, it'll be your fault. <laughs> Okay, so uh, what can we expect with this sequel? Well, we'll keep the elements from the original that everyone loved. The violence, uh, the fact that all the dialogue is in Aramaic and Latin and no one can understand it. Uh, the portrayal of Jews as baby-eating five-ish finkles. <laughs> but then a few new elements and surprises. Uh, for example, we all know that Jesus was resurrected. That's no surprise. I mean, that's why I'm going to heaven no matter what I do. <laughs> but did you know that when he was resurrected and returned to Earth that he was even more ripped than he was before? I mean, he had abs before and pretty good definition. But when he came back, he had obliques and everything. It was amazing. We're putting Jim Caviezel through the ringer as we speak. These workouts are intense. We got a CrossFit guy and an exorcist working on him. Is this in the Bible? I mean, do you base these movies on the Bible? You know, it's interesting, Jimmy. The Bible doesn't actually say much about Jesus. That's why we'll have to put these pieces back together on our own. I see. We do get admittedly a little loose with the scriptures. I mean, I'm a paleo-Catholic with a deep respect for the word. But I'm also a Hollywood guy with a deep respect for story and spectacle. You know, the number one criticism of the original Passion of the Christ was that there weren't enough explosions. <laughs> At first, I dismissed that criticism as ridiculous, considering there were no explosives in the first century A.D., but in the past 15 years of slowly going insane, I've come around to see that point. Okay. <laughs> there will be a lot more explosions in the second one. Because keep in mind, he's resurrected now. Jesus can do whatever he wants. He can make explosions happen. He can blow up bad guys. He's basically a superhero now. In fact, we are in talks to see if we can include this project in the Marvel Cinematic Universe somehow. I have a teaser at the end with Iron Man. Maybe set up future films with Guardians of the Galaxy. Are you kidding me? Jimmy, please tell me your theology isn't so rigid that you don't realize <laughs> that just because the Guardians of the Galaxy are not explicitly mentioned in the Gospels, that doesn't mean the Gospels preclude the existence of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I, I really don't think... Uh... Oh, wow, it's John Calvin over here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> well, Mel, I'll be, I'll be looking forward to this project. Thanks, Jimmy, and I am too. I look forward to this being a huge success, then me falling off the wagon, <laughs> then me going on a racist tirade in the most obviously audio-taped environment imaginable, then we'll all come crashing down again, I'll treat my rage problem, and then make another movie about Jesus. <laughs> Sounds like you have sort of a regular cycle you can count on. What can I say, Jimmy? I love resurrections.